as you've heard, welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In the last episode, we made our way through the Fire Temple, defeated the marbled Goba, and of course, we're able to get Yunobo as our Sage of Fire on our team here, which is pretty cool. We're able to complete Yunobo of Goron City, and we're now back at Goron City to uh, just talk to everybody and see what's going on now. Now that everything's sort of, I guess, concluded. Yay, fun, fun time with Offrak. We get to relax now. I'm glad. Listen to this, listen to this. We got asked by President Yunobo to do a really important job. We're gonna be representing the Gorons. All right, well, what about Pluto over here? I remembered something about that other Zelda. When we were mining marbled rock roast on the north side of Death Mountain, she said something kind of funny. She told me not to go near the lizard lakes, but she didn't say why. Bit surprised to hear the words lizard lakes coming out of your craw. Don't hear, do, don't much hear about them lakes these days. I still recall an old nurse around the bottom. One brother hunts what the other brother hides. Two lizards fighting over what's inside. Not everyone knows this, but the lizard lakes are also called the lizard brothers. I searched high and low for them back in my younger years. Always saw treasure must be there somewhere. Then on my hunt, Death Mountain blew its top. It was covered in lava before I could, you could say boom. Boy, I'd forgotten all about my search for the lakes. That's it, talking about this has me all worked up. It's been a real long time, but I'm ready to start the hunt again. Best place to start looking is halfway up Death Mountain. My hunch way back when, when led me to the north side. There's a Yonobo Code dig site there too. So we can hop in a mine a cart and get cracking. Good, my aching back. Oh no, the hidden treasure at Lizard Lakes, a side quest. Pluto told you about Lizard Lakes and shared a nursery rhyme. One brother hunts what the other brother hides, two lizards fighting over what's inside. He believes they're halfway up Death Mountain on the north side. Okay, let's take a look at that. Half, okay, here's, oh! Yeah, look at these guys. They definitely are some Lizard Lakes. That is so cute. How did I not notice that before? I love it. Do they have anything more to say? I still recall an old nursery rhyme about the Lizard Lakes. Yep, okay, we heard before. Okay, where should I look? You're telling me you're gonna go looking? If you're serious, you'll wanna head out halfway up Death Mountain. Pretty sure it was the north side. There's the Inovico dig site there too, so you can hop in a minecart and get cracking. Warm from my aching back, I join you. Hey Link, I've been cracking my skull trying to remember anything that might help clue us in on Zelda, but so much of my memory is a blur from when I was wearing that weird mask. I did recall one thing though. Hmm. When we were mining marble rock roast on the north side of Death Mountain, the princess said something. She told me not to go near the lizard lakes, but she didn't say why. That's why I was talking to boss about it. I wonder why, is there something like dangerous there? Well, for now, I figure it's best just to run around and sort of see how all the citizens of Goron City are. So strange. The marble rock roast just up and vanished. Sometimes the strangest things happen. But the city's bustling again, and leaving the work to, at the end to that younger Goron means we've got time on our hands now. Maybe we should take a vacation, eh? Ooh. Oh, let's go somewhere we can really see the moon. I'm thinking the best place we were born, Trey. Remember how the full moon shone on the ground there? How could I forget? It was quite a sight. Going back there is a great idea. But what, what with the lava flows, the area has gotten confusing to navigate. I don't remember where it is. I'll follow you on this one, Vulcan. Uh-oh. Now what's going on? You don't remember how to get there, buddy. Full moon? He's dropping, were ya? Gorons are born of the, of the land, you see? Vulcan and I were born of the same place. So you could say we're rock brothers. Ah. We're born in a cave. But the full moon shone so brightly, lighting up the darkness of the cave. It was a mystical thing to see. Mm. I remember thinking it was weird that it was the middle of the day and not night. I was just a baby, but I still remember it. Mm. The only other thing I recall is that it was somewhere at Lake Feroda in Elden Canyon, but that's it. Whoa. My memory's all fuzzy. Vulcan, can you remember anything else? Ah. It's no use. Nothing is bringing it to mind. Maybe if I could see a picture or something that shows that full moon shining on the ground. Maybe I'll just stare at a map until I remember or something. Moon gazing Gorons. Vulcan and Trey want to go moon gazing. They spoke of a place where you can see the full moon shining on the ground at midday, but they can't recall how to get there. They only know that it is at Lake Verona in Elden Canyon. 
they might recall if they had a picture of the full moon shining on the ground during daylight. Okay, so we'll definitely have to take a look at that at some point, but it's cool to get these different quests so we can sort of figure out as we get farther into uh, the game. I'm sure we'll get around to doing them eventually. Oh, you! Been looking for you, I wanna sell you more stuff. What I want now is, hopefully it's still Topaz, because I think I have enough. Okay, so, now that the marbled rock roast is gone, the Gorons are back to the usual grind. I finally feel like I can relax and get the ore I need for my business. Oh. Hmm, you're back, so, you have ore to sell me, right? Got any topazes? I think I have 10, I'll sell. Sorry, so there we go. So what else do you wanna buy? Since you're speaking to me again, I assume you have ore to sell me. Got any rubies? Okay, let me see how many rubies I have. Amber is getting easier to come by, so the selling price is lower than ever, and the only one who will buy them at a high price these days. Let me see really fast, because if I only have 10 rubies, I probably don't wanna sell 10 rubies, I have 16. I can sell 10 of them then. Oh. Since you're speaking to me again, I assume you have ore to sell me. Yes, I do. So, rubies, 10 for 1,300, sounds like a good price. What do you wanna sell now? Sapphires, 10. Okay, so, let's see once again. How many sapphires? I only have eight sapphires right now. I was hoping they, were to, they would ask for opals. Not quite the case. I mean, I could buy some here. 10 for 1,700, which means she's buying them for 170 a peach, piece. So I, I don't think that this would be worth it. Yeah, because these are 300 a piece. Uh, so I guess we'll leave that. I mean, I can always find some half price some other places, so not too worrisome, but they're, oh! Here's a couple of people. What should I do? Hi, Dugby. I'll never get to Gr Grandia like this. Did you find Grandia? Cause I did. Oh, hey, it's you, uh, Grandia? Grandia who? Never heard of him. Never heard that Grandia is actually a place where Gorons used to live. Definitely never heard that and not looking for it either. No way would I be looking for a place that has weird vehicles and exciting treasures. And I most certainly didn't find the minecart tracks that probably led to this legendary place I know nothing about. The tracks definitely don't have something wrong with them that's keeping me from looking at for the place. Nope, please don't sneak up on me for a second. I thought my big secret was out. I'm gonna check out the minecart tracks. Don't follow me. I mean, I would love to help. The ancient city, Garandia? We've already been there, which is so funny. The young Dugby is searching for the city of Garandia, where the Gorons of old once lived. He said he's found the minecart tracks leading to Garandia, but there's a problem with them. He told you not to follow him. Well, well, we'll follow him later. Hi, Kato. If it isn't Link, have you come here to look for geoglyphs too? We're in the area after hearing there may be some out here. Link, hello. Link, I have some inf new information I'd like to share regarding the forgotten temple we'd spoken about. I spend more time with the literature about the temple, and it seems probable that within the temple lies a clue even more thrilling than the geoglyphs themselves. I felt more excited than a schoolboy who caught a fireproof lizard. I'm determined to unravel that clue as soon as possible. Oh. Hmm. We don't have enough information at this point, so we need to research each lead with scrutiny. The geoglyphs that appeared with the upheaval and the phenomena happening across Hyrule. There must be a connection, but what is it? Guess we'll find out over time. Well, good to catch up with you two. I haven't actually seen any geoglyphs around here just yet, but I'll keep looking. But with all the money that we gained by selling some to that one Gerudo lady, I can definitely start buying some of this gear. We got the, the Flame Breaker boots, um, and we also have over here the Flame Breaker armor and the Flame Breaker helm. In total, that's 2,100. So that's gonna be a little bit more expensive than I can afford for all of them. But maybe I could still do it. I mean, I could probably sell some stuff to you, right? Yeah. Welcome, Guard City is cool these days, but the caves are still piping hot. A little island like you would get scorched. Fireproof elixir will lose its effect after some time, but you'll be A-OK -okay wearing some flame resistant equipment we have here. So I could still sell them a couple of things. I mean, I could still sell them sapphires and more than that, I can sell them this because it was, I think 3,400 I would need. So if I could just make like 800 rupees really quick, it'd cost me most of my topazes out, or pearls or opals, whatever these are. Let me sell, I have 21 of them. Let me sell 11 for 330 rupees. Yep, there we go. And then lots of other stuff here, but I think I, I could sell a diamond really fast. I might just make it easier. Let me just sell one diamond. There we go. All right, so that should be enough to buy everything, I think. Anytime. 
All right then, so yeah, let's check out our first thing, Flame Breaker Boots. Goran Artisans use flame resistant rocks to craft these fireproof boots for curious Hylians visiting Goran oh. City. Once Sith Mountain stopped erupting, this area cooled down a lot, but there's still lava inside the caves. Oh. Flame resistant equipment is still useful for those areas at least, and I'm selling it at a very discounted price. Oh. You'll buy that, it'll be 1200 rupees, yep. All right, then we're, there we go, we get the Flame Breaker Boots, thank you. If you're gonna work in the cave, flame resistant equipment would be useful for you, and it's your lucky day. It's discounted right now. Oh. You'll buy that, 700 rupees, yep. Okay, so we get the Flame Breaker Armor, armor crafted by Gorons for Hylians curious enough to visit Goron City. It's made from fire resistant rocks to protect the wearer. Oh. Thanks, yeah. And then finally, the Flame Breaker Helm. If you're gonna work in the cave, flame resistant equipment would be useful for you, and it's your lucky day, because it's discounted. Oh. Is it really? We'll see about that. Stone headgear made by Goran Craftsman to protect tourists visiting Goron City. As if it, it, as if its flame resistant isn't enough of a selling point, it also covers your entire head. Thank you. So there we go, they're all sold out. We can equip our new gear here. So we got the uh, body and the torso. There we go. We're looking nice and protected. And it still gives us nine armor, which really isn't that bad. So yeah, we can head back out into the world and not worry about having to be all melted by the lava. <laughs> That's great. So I figure it's still good to walk around and see who else we can talk to. clock a clock a zoom Wee, my car land was so fun. I knew Jango would make it the best. Oh yeah, I remember now. You're the stranger. Well, um, my car land is open now, so it isn't a secret anymore. Jango made it a fun place where you can go zoom. I just want, it's so fun. So I guess we gotta find out where that is. The Angorans are back to work and my car land was complete, completed safely. I think it's about time I retire and tour some hot springs. Suppose I'll start with Goron Hot Springs. Actually, maybe I'll go farther than that. Maybe I'll take a peek at Simmerstone Springs. Goron Hot Springs? They're the most famous hot springs these lands over. Oh, up there. Just cross that bridge and head south, you can't miss them. There's an elderly fellow at Goron Hot Springs who really knows the stuff when it comes to hot springs. You told me about a place called Simmerstone Springs that's apparently legendary. Can't decide whether to go to Goron Hot Springs or Simmerstone Springs. This is just what I heard from the elderly fellow who's regular out of Goron Hot Springs. Guy knows his stuff. He says Simmerstone is in a place called Gorko Tunnel, which is farther south than Goron Hot Springs. But that area is expansive, so if you're going there, I recommend you ask him for specifics. The water here sure is nice. Nothing beats soaking in the sunshine. I guess so. And here's Jengo, a traveler. Fancy a daytime soak? You should head to Minecar Land. It's Inobuko's masterwork. Of course, I helped build it too. Once you leave the city gate, head straight down the road and you'll see it on your left. When I'm feeling better, I intend to have a good time there myself. All right, well, I definitely want to check out Minecart Land. So I have to head out here and then to the left. Does it really tell us exactly where it is? It'd be cool if it told us on the map, but I don't think it does. Okay, anyways, uh, let's go and talk to you. It looks like you have your apprentice back now. You okay? Gah! Master Rohan, please let me try making the boulder breaker again. You've got some gall, kid. After you up and left the workshop in the middle of training for some marbled rockers, what's it? I'm done with you. I've got no excuses, but I still need to put up the put the finishing touches on that boulder breaker. First, let me prove myself, please. If it's still no good, then you can be done with me. Well, you've got your enthusiasm and that counts for something. Without materials, how do you intend to do this? You'll need a cobble crusher, five pieces of flint, and three diamonds to complete it. Since you spend all of our material funds on marble or acros, we're dried up. We don't have money or materials. Uh, I, I'll just uh, do something about that. Soul of the Gorons. The art of the Boulder Breaker is passed down over generations, but Fugo, the apprentice, gave up on making it midway and sold the materials he was using for marbled rock roast. To complete the Boulder Breaker and earn his master's approval, he needs a cobble crusher, three diamonds, and five pieces of flint. I think we technically have that, but uh, I don't know if we should do that straight away. <laughs> Let me talk to him a little bit. Huh, what? Sorry, this is a forge, not a shop. Anyway, I'm kinda in the middle of something at the moment. Master, please, please give me one more chance to make the boulder breaker. We've got your, okay, he's gonna say the same thing again, so we don't need to do that. Uh, yep, 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 same thing. So, good to know. 
Is there anything else around? There's one more building over that way, but then we're checking out Minecart Land for sure. That's what I want to see. That should be a blast. It looks like there's more Grons up that way too. Okay. And over, just like this. And, oh, I think that might be it, okay. I don't think anybody's in here, okay. So, there was another Goron at this entrance. I thought that's where we had to go, but maybe it's not? Hard to tell. Hello, marbled rock roast. No marbled rock roast? That's all I need to know. You can pass. The lamps are shining bright. Earlier, they they were dim from that big old pile of marbled rock roast smoldering in the city center. Nobody's bringing marbled rock roast in my city ever again if I have something to say about it. <laughs> All right, well, that's good to hear. Anyways, yeah, there was a minecart over here, and I guess it leads to minecart land? I'm not quite sure. Here. <laughs> These are them, the secret tracks. Um, where did the cart go? Uh-oh, <laughs> we're catching up the Dugby, I guess. Oh, there it is. Grandia has gotta be down these tracks. But with all these big rocks having fallen on the tracks, I don't know what to do. And the car won't move, ugh. The ancient city of Grandia? The young Dugby is searching for the city of Grandia, where the Gorns of old once lived. He says he's found the minecart tracks leading to Grandia, but he can't figure out how to move the cart. Also, the rocks have fallen on top of the tracks. Well, I can definitely help with that. Grandia has gotta be down these tracks. With all those big rocks having fallen, okay. The cart, uh, the cart is not quite ready, but I'll never make it to Grandia at this rate. I'll help you out, buddy, don't worry. So, we get this right here. We're gonna get this onto there too, just for good measure. Got it. All right, now the cart's ready. Yep, we know all about it, don't worry. Cart is ready. Huh? When did that happen? How did you know I wanted to use it? Wait a sec. This happened last time I saw you too. You've got superpowers, don't you? That's the only way. Well, whatever. It's fixed now, so I can keep going. Bye. Well, I'm gonna be going with you because uh, I wanna make sure that these rocks don't stop your path. I wanna make sure you're safe. Uh, we'll, we'll use the cobble crusher for now, but uh, I'll need to pick this up and move it. No, okay, hold on. Bake it up. Move it. Okay, some of them are, oh no! I'm sorry, oh, I'm gonna fall. Not good. I'm so sorry, Doug B. Let me, let me have it a second try at that. That was close. I'm glad I didn't get hurt before making it to Grandia. I feel so bad. All right, we're moving again. I gotta move these out of the way. As you can see, there's a bit of a traffic jam, but it's all right. I just do that, and I pick this up. Same deal, throw it out of the way. Pick this up, and then get it out of here. I just gotta make sure it separates from us a little bit. So is this not minecart land? I'm still a little bit confused on that, on where exactly it is. But uh, we'll just head down here for now. We and we sort of made it. Woo, I crossed the track. <laughs> Everyone says it's super fun over here. And if it's fun, that definitely means, means Grandia is here. Oh, hey guy, you're still here? That was a close one. You almost overheard that I'm looking for Grandia. <laughs> oh, 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 you probably want a reward, huh? All right, we got another another large Zonai charge as a reward. All right, Grandia is, uh... Ooh, I can feel it, I can feel the fun. It's so close now. I definitely found Grandia this time. A super awesome place just for me, loaded with treasure, and I'm the only one who knows. All right, well maybe we can have Doug be a little bit more later, but for right now, the ancient city of Grandia complete. Oh, oh, look at this. I guess because we're out of the town now, we can also see Yonobo's uh, sort of spirit. Yonobo's vow has granted you the power to summon his avatar. Awesome. I don't know how that works, really. I mean, obviously he's around right now. And I guess I just walk up to him, get him to do whatever. But I do want to, of course, Read the rest of what happened there. So the ancient city of Grandia, little Dugmi is searching for the city of Grandia, where the Gorons of old once lived. You delivered him to his destination and he ran off smiling, excited about the, what lay ahead. Okay. So is it down here? This is the Southern Mine, but it's not quite what I thought it would be. I don't know, I'm very confused about the whole 
Mario Kart I am thing. I thought it'd be around here, but I guess not. Either way, we talked to everybody else I wanted to in Goron City, so if we wanted to, we could actually make our way back to uh, Lookout Landing, sort of get a reset before we head to our next zone. Oh, oh I got both of them. Look at me being a quick shot. All right, I'll grab this and that, but I really don't need the fireproof lizards anymore. That's why we have uh, this new gear. So maybe I just won't worry about it as much. And you can see there's a lot of these fancy lights. They gotta be leading to something. Oh, there's a Hylian over here. I don't think they were here before. So maybe I'll go talk to them too. Okay, get some of that. Oh, there's so much to get over here though too. I would like to get some good rewards for it, you know? So Amber, that broke though. And I don't really have too much at the moment that would pack the same punch. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll save, save the rest of it for later. Minecart land. Okay, no, this is minecart land. Okay. Uh, in there? I'm so confused. Grandi, huh? I heard a Goron talking about Garandia, so I tailed him here, but uh, is is this really Garandia? No, right? Kind of felt like a no when I was telling him. I mean, anyway, you slice it. This is minecart land. Maybe the whole rumor was a bunch of bunk to begin with. Now what do I do? I told my news agency that I was chasing a huge lead just before I came here. And this ain't huge. Aww. That's it. There's a minecart, there's minecart land and hot springs, the Unobuco stores. Whole lot of stuff to see around here. Makes you wish you had a guidebook for Grand City, huh? Maybe one written by your favorite reporter. Gonna have to update my book's title through, though. How about Delma's Guide to Grand City? Yeah, that'll do, that'll do just fine. Interesting, so we got a reporter here. I'll forget about Grandia for now. Minecart Land has inspired me to write a guidebook. I'll cover this place, the Hot Springs, and the Unobo Code Gem Shops too. Oh, and the book needs a title change. Goodbye, Doma's Guide to the Unknown. Hello, Doma's Guide to Goron City. Yeah, that's the stuff. What's up there? Oh, that's just a flower. All right, well then I guess we'll head into Minecart Land because that's what I've been wanting to see so badly. Uh, What about Dugby? Oh, it's you, are you following me again? You're sure pushy, I like that. So I'll let you in on a little something. It's actually a secret to everyone. <laughs> I've discovered the home of the Gorons of old, Gorondia. Guess what else? There are Gorondians there too, but I've gotta go to sleep. I'll tell you more about the Gorondians in the cave tomorrow, okay? Okay. I guess because it's 8 p.m., a little past our bedtime, huh? That makes sense. But what if we go in? I mean, there's no minecarts here, but this is the Southern Mine in Elden Canyon, so I guess this counts as minecart land. Should we set up a fire somewhere and just wake up the next day? That's probably for the best, so let me do that really quickly. I'll get um this, and we should have little bundles of wood somewhere. Uh, did I miss it? Oh wait, there it was. Right over here, and drop. Cool, and then I need a sword. It's just, I probably could just use the ruby sword. Would that work? Yes, it would. Okay, so sit here and wait until morning. Okay, it's the next day, 12 p.m., and Doug B's back out here. Grandians. <laughs> I've been watching the Grandians lately. They've been inside the cave for a long time. Sometimes I can see them zooming down the spiral tracks. I want to play with them. But I'm so nervous about talking to actual real Grandians that I freeze. Uh, well, maybe, can we just pick you up? I don't think so. Should I go down there? I don't have a minecart right now, so I'd have to walk down. Might take us some time, but I'm up for the challenge. I mean, and that's also, we have the the new gear that I've been wanting to try out, so maybe going deeper inside will sort of be a good reason for that. But you know, this is a mine with something on the map, so that means that there's definitely going to be a bubble gem. So let's go check it out. Hey, there's workers down here too. So he thinks that these are Garandians. <laughs> All right, they don't look happy. Smile, start with carts. Customer, we got a customer here. You ready, little brothers? Here we go. From morning till morning. And smiles all the time. Hey, Cabetta, what's your face doing? Get it together. My face? What about your face? Not in front of the customer, brothers. Let's bicker and more smiling. Okay, let's take it from the top. Ready and from morning till morning. It smiles all the time. <laughs> Welcome to minecart land. 
or mine cards mean smiles. Ah. Brought to you by the one and only Unovo Cow. <laughs> the rules are simple. You ride a minecart down the track, popping as many targets as you can within the time limit. You'll want to use arrows to pop the targets. Oh, and don't leave the cards. Game over. Pop five more targets before the time runs out, and you win. <gasps> to keep things fair, you'll be riding our deal or dear old cart. No outside carts allowed. Put the cart on the track and get in and start smiling. <laughs> and to celebrate our grand opening, your first ride is free. We'll even give you 10 arrows on the house. Nice. Get better at your face. You're doing it again. You're gonna scare away the customer. Look at me, you gotta smile. Hey! <laughs> Actually, I think he has a better handling on smiling than you guys do. Like this! Please don't mind them. Now it's time to hop in the cart. This is a self-service kind of joint, so you'll be the one who put the cart on the tracks. Minecart land to open for business. Minecart Land, an entertainment experience built by Inobuco, is now open. Hit five or more targets within the time limit to win. Put the minecart on the track and climb aboard to begin the game. Sure. Minecart Land, Minecart Land. Every ride is always grand. Oh, ask me if there's anything you don't understand. What are the rules? So we just have to hit those targets? You ride a minecart down the track, pop in as many targets as you can within the time limit. You want to use arrows to pop the target. Okay, so yeah, we, we did hear about this. Um, and we're writing that. So I think I get the idea. Do you guys have anything you to say? Yeah. Smile! You want to smile like this? You got to talk to Paige. Oh. Are their faces scaring you? Sorry about that. They're trying to smile, really. Yeah. It's just President Unobo entrusted us with running Minecart Land. And they're really pumped about all this. But maybe they're a little too pumped. Ah. Anyway, if you want to give the game a shot, Go talk to Beige. I know he looks kind of intimidating, but he's harmless, I swear. All right, these guys are great, I love them. But we're just going to grab this, put it here, and I guess we're good? Are you ready to roll? All set. Then let the game begin. Wait a second while I get the target set up. This is great, so I might want to change my bow. Here we go. Three, two, one, and let's get going. So. We're moving. Let's see. Uh, got it. Got it. We're doing really good so far. Ah, oh, that was a little too. Ah. Uh, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. <laughs> it's okay, cause I think we'll loop around. Got it. And then over this way, if I could just. Oh, a little too far again. That's okay, cause I got it there. And then if we could just look around a little bit just to see what's coming up next. Ready, boom. Got it, that's eight of them. Here is nine. And then, well there's quite a few, but I'm missing some of them unfortunately. Boom, that's 10. But I think there's more on the inside, if I'm not mistaken. Luckily it moves nice and slow. We have seven seconds remaining. Come on, come on. I think it goes right over here, and then Ah, oh, I don't think I'll be able to get to it in time, but I think there was one more. I got 11 targets hit. That wasn't bad though, that was a lot of fun. Ooh. It's time to announce your results. Looks like you hit a total of 11 targets. <laughs> smile, amazing, that makes you a winner. Oh no, I was so surprised I forgot to smile. Here's your prize, offered up with the biggest of smiles. We get a red rupee, so that's great. And the minecart land open for business complete. Your smile still has room to grow. But lucky for you, we've prepped a high speed course geared towards up and up and comers. If you're interested, come talk to me instead of my brother. Sure. Huh, minecart land quick shot course. So that's good to know. And we also just completed the open for business one. My current land and entertainment experience put by Yonobuko is now open. You destroyed five or more targets within the time limit and beat the game. Heal invited you to try out the intermediate course, which is what is activated over here. You know, Boko presents Minecart Land. You have cleared the beginner course. Heal invited you to try the intermediate one over here. Yeah. My game's a little different from Pages. Uh, it's custom crafted for a slightly tougher challenge. It'll put your rapid fire shooting to the test. You in? I'm in. Yeah. So quick. Fast response time, you've got there. Good stuff, let's speed you through the rules. Uh. 
You hop in the car, roll down the track, shoot seven targets as quick as you can. No getting now once you're rolling. Pop all the targets within 120 and you win. To keep things fair, you'll be riding our dear, dear old car. No outside carts allowed. Put the mine cart on the track, get in and get going. Ah. Round's free and I'll even throw in some arrows for maximum fun. All right then, so at least we're getting some arrows back. Now go hop in the mine car for some high speed thrills. So, we're going into this one then. Hit seven targets within the time limit to win. Place the car on the rails and get in to start the game. So yeah, this is the intermediate course. We get the idea, we can just hop in like this. You ready for some speed? All set. So let's see how fast this truly is. Cause last time it was pretty slow. Time to roll. Three, two, one, and go. So, we're moving again. Got it. In the first three really easy, but where it gets tricky is that, oh no, oh I can hit the rail out there, which is not what I want, but I think I want this one. This, the more we can hit on this first time through, the better. But we also have to keep in mind like angling and stuff. Got it, that was already, okay, so it just cuts off as soon as we get seven. You hit seven, that's game. So this one's a lot more about speed than anything else. And let's hear the results. Your time for this run was 2370. So fast, fantastic. You cleared that course in the blink of an eye. Hang on a sec, I was so stunned I forgot to smile for you. Here's your prize, happy face and all. We get a purple ruby this time. Minecart land, quick shot course complete. And of course, maybe we get another one? You beat both my brother's courses. You're pretty incredible, you know that? Watching you handle the minecart that gave me an idea for a course of my own. I'm gonna set it up at Death Mountain. In fact, I think I'll go set it up now. Come give it a try when you can. All right then, so that means we have Minecraft Land Death Mountain up next, oh my goodness. So yeah, right now we got the intermediate course done, right down um, this way, the quick shot course. Competitive high difficulty course awaits you at the peak of Death Mountain, because we've already done this one. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so Kibeta had an idea for a high quality minecart course on Death Mountain, no less. He said he'd be waiting for you at the summit of Death Mountain, so we'll probably put that as our marker. But let's talk to you two and maybe go deeper if we can, or is that really it? I think that's it. So that really is the extent of minecart land as it just being this one obstacle course. For now, I'm sure they'll expand into greater rides soon. Bonus smile! If you want to play something laid back, talk to Beige. If you're looking for something that packs a punch, I recommend Cabetta's Death Mountain course. My course is smack dab in the middle, not too easy and not too hard. It's 20 rupees just to play, but 50 rupees, but for 50 rupees you also get 10 arrows. I'm out, sorry. With your skills, you might even be able to beat Cabetta's course. If you're curious, he's up at the peak of Death Mountain. All right, let's go and do that now then. So way up there, luckily we can teleport right there too. So we'll get right over there and just get to working. <laughs> So we're back here at the summit of Death Mountain. I need to ascend upwards from the shrine. Let's see what else we can do around here. Okay, here you are, over here. Ah. I just knew you'd come. Turning Death Mountain into a minecart course is a pretty groundbreaking idea if I do say so myself. Oh. I was hoping I could mine, minecart land, I'd be, I could be minecart land's main attraction, but the idea is so groundbreaking that I haven't drawn a single customer, <laughs> which makes you my very first. Oh. This is a super hard course only for serious carters. And since you cleared my brother's courses, I imagine you'll take it on with a smile. You uh wouldn't have come all this way if you weren't gonna play, right? Oh, I'm gonna play. Ah. I knew you would. The rules are simple as can be. Shoot at least eight targets while riding the cart down Death Mountain and reach the goal within the time limit to win. You do tend to tend to pick up a lot of speed racing down the mountain though, so watch out for that. Oh. You'll be using my personal minecart. No other carts allowed. Put the minecart on the track, get in, and the game will begin. To celebrate your mountain climbing courage, I'll let you play for free. I'm not skimping on the arrows either. You've earned them. So we get 10 more arrows here. Get as ready as you need to. Minecart land, Death Mountain. Kibeta invited you to his high difficulty Death Mountain course. Hey, eight or more targets within the time limit to win. To get started, place the cart on the rails and hop on in. Okay, eight targets is our goal, but it's our first time racing this course, so it might end up being really difficult. Ready to go, I'm all set. All right, let's start the game. Give me just a minute to get the target set up. Whoa, okay. Have a good time. I'll try my best, I'm a little scared, but here we go. 
Okay, so our first one's coming up directly in front of us. That's a pretty easy one. Here's our next one. So, so far, not too big of a deal, but as he warned, oh, our bow is badly damaged. So let's just switch it now so we don't have to worry about a potential mess up later. As we go down, the faster it will go. So it's crucial that we don't miss any of these early ones. Gotcha. It looks like getting a bullseye doesn't really change much, but I'm still trying for it. <laughs> so we got six there. So if we can just hit two more, we're already in the clear here. Got it. And then one more right here. Got it, but it continues onward. Whoa, I missed. Ah, oh, no, wait, uh, that's not what I wanted. I wonder if I could recall it. Wait, could I? That feels like cheating. But I mean, I guess I could. The time is still going down, so I gotta be careful of that. But uh, here, stop it, and then, uh, how do I get it to go forward? Oh, no, don't get out, don't get out. Uh, I might have messed everything up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, okay. If we do this, it'll go down naturally. There we go. And hopefully have enough speed that we can continue. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, we're up to 10 of them. So it's not like, you know, we're doing fine. I guess it just might not have been really worth doing all that. Anyways, ready? Ah, darn it. Got it. Okay, gotta turn quick. This next one's coming up. Right there, boom. And there. So far, so good. There's still plenty more waiting for us. Right there, ah, oh, darn. It's okay, it's okay. Cool. No, no! That's fine, 16, double what we're supposed to have. And then, ah, uh, couldn't quite get that one. That's okay, 17 is quite the score, right? Goal! Wonder if we get anything for getting them all, though. Time to announce your results. This time, you hit 17 targets. I didn't think anyone would be able to clear my course. Gotta say, you're incredible. Here's your prize. So we get the Goron fabric. Tough fabric bearing a Goron design. It looks like it could be used to make a paraglider. That's cool. Pretty cool, huh? You should take that cloth southeast to the dye shop in Atena Village. I'm sure they can make it even cooler. Yeah. We'll always be happy to welcome you back to Minecart Land, even happier if you shock us with the highest record. So Minecart Land, Death Mountain complete. You cleared the high difficulty Death Mountain course. Cabetta gave you some fabric to reward you for clearing all of Minecart Land. He said you can make it into something Hatena Village, at something in uh, Hatena Village in Southeast Hyrule. He also said Minecart Land is still accepting challenges if you want to play again. Yeah. You're back, all right. The course continues to be a hair too groundbreaking to attract any customers. But every time you turn up, it makes me think that all this grueling, strenuous labor was completely yeah. worth it. The game costs 20 rupees to play, 50 rupees, and you get 10 euros too. I mean, I think I'm good as long as we don't get anything for getting everything. I don't think we would. At least not anything too crazy. But uh, that was still really cool. We were able to get a exclusive little cloth there. We'll definitely have to make some custom hand gliders at some point. But yeah, that was really going through Goron City. Uh, we got to check out Minecart Land, which was a big thing for me. I think beyond that, I mean, saying that there's still something in Southern Mine, there has to be a, a you know a, um, a bubble gem there somewhere. But maybe something I should save for some other time because this is the East Restaurant Cave. There's still so much to do in this area. But I think for right now, let's go back to Lookout Landing and see how things are going there. Okay, so here we are at Lookout Landing, Skyview Tower. Home sweet home in a lot of ways. I don't know if there's gonna be anything different around here, but I figure we'll just take a quick poke around and find for ourselves because once we got back from Yudo know, Village, um, there was a lot that was different and we got to be able to go on a couple of quests. So, like there's a little Goron here. This guy wasn't here before, so let's see if we can catch up to you. Hey there, uh, you're very fast as Slurko. It's President Yudobo's friend. <laughs> this place is amazing. There's so much fun stuff to do here, wee. But just because it's fun doesn't mean we're spending all of our time playing. We're super busy scouting for bad guys. Huh, okay, so I guess we're just here to help in a lot of ways. Did they have anything new here since I bought this gear? I mean, I guess they imported some of that stuff, interesting. Mm. God, it's so great. Mm. Hey, you're uh, you're interested in the Snow Cool tunic that just came in stock too? Mm. I've been eyeing that view for a while now, but I don't quite have enough rupees. Maybe I should sell off some of my ore so I can buy it already. Interesting, see we got the snow quill over here. Can't quite afford it. Wonder how things are now. I'm worried about everyone back home in Laurel and Village. 
keep hoping they, they got away from the pirates. Me too. We're so fortunate to have refuge here. Can't say the same for everyone else. The village is way out in the east of Nakluda to the southeast, or the edge of East Nakluda to the southeast, and there's nowhere nearby for them to run to. Rizel's the village leader, so he'd be the first to know how things shook out back at home. But we've got no way to reach him. Never thought of something, something like this would happen in our peaceful little hometown. Hmm? Are you a customer? You must have overheard the bad news, but enough about that. Village attacked by pirates. Hey, welcome. Heading out, stock up before you go. I had to close up shop in my hometown. It just wasn't possible to do business there anymore. Your hometown? I came from a small fishing town called Laurel and Village. It was way to the south on the southeastern corner of Hyrule. It used to be a peaceful place too. Then the pirates arrived. I used to run the village's general store, but when those pirates arrived, I had to grab all the goods I could carry and run. I, I don't know how it's going there now. I hope I can return someday, but for now, I'll just keep selling as much stuff as I can. Please let me know if there's anything you'd like. Anything else you need? Uh, not for right now. If you want something, just pick it out and let me know. But I do want to take a look at that quest. So, Village Attacked by Pirates, side quest. Mubs and Garini's hometown, Laurel and Village, was attacked by pirates. The village is at the edge of East Nakluda in the southeast. There are no neighboring villages to flee to, so they're concerned about the safety of the villagers. If you find Rizel, the head of the village, you should know more. We'll get there eventually for sure. Do I have any fresh milk? I don't, so I'll buy one. Um, yeah, this fresh milk comes from Hateno bred cows and white goats from all across Hyrule. It's delicious on its own but can be used in soups and stews too. All right, I'll buy it. And is there anything else here? I don't, actually I don't have any Hylian rice. This grain is a favorite among residents of Kakariko Village. It's grown in regions with a lot of water and is quite versatile, used as an ingredient in things like risotto and rice balls. Just one, just so that we have it in our inventory. I think that's about it for this. But I do have plenty of Korok seeds, so now would be a great time to upgrade our inventory. Seems like a fast horse. Shalaka Paka! Yeah. Shaka Koala! Okay, see, so yeah, we do have more Korok seeds. So let's first, just, we'll just upgrade everything one at a time. So let's do our weapon stash for right now. Show K, five Korok seeds, you got it, buddy. He's gonna do his happy little dance. We'll see it once because we haven't seen it today. <laughs> there we go, and that should just give us an additional weapon slot. Right there. Looking good. Da, na 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 na. <laughs> Expand a band band weapon stash, Akala. I still smell Korok seeds on you. So yeah, let's upgrade our bow stash this time for the same price, five Korok seeds. I'll skip this for the sake of brevity. And then that means we can of course get one more shield slot as well. But then we'll be sort of fresh out of Korok seed for a bit. Yep, let's do our shield stash. Oh, you only need four Korok seeds for this one, okay. Guess we should've done that one first. Okay, so I guess the next thing we should upgrade is the shields again, so that everything's evened out, but that's fine for now. I don't think we can make anything bigger at this point, but they need eight Korok seeds. You can see it's jumping up higher and higher now, so eight Korok seeds for the next upgrade there. That's odd, Ooh, what's up here? Carson, when do you think the stable will be ready? Ah. It'll be a while, still be a while yet. I need to get the last of the roof planks correctly fitted. There's only one spot to finish. Well, until the stable is ready, we can't board any more horses. What a shame. The incomplete stable. Lester, the horse guard, is at a loss because he can't take horses until the stable is ready. Carson has been trying to build a stable, but he's struggling to figure out how to fit the final roof plank. Well, we can try to help out with this one. I wanna finish up construction on the stable, but I'm not sure how to best best to tackle fitting this roof plank in. Okay, so it's right here. I can definitely help with that. I mean, I can't get the best view from here. Okay, I can sort of see it a little bit more now. Let's get a little bit closer to us and then just try to squeeze it in like that maybe. It's so hard to really maneuver this properly. Oh, there it goes, it just snapped in. Well, look at that, it fits perfectly. Oh. Thanks for helping out. I was having a hard time figuring out how to fit it. 
With the roof done, all that's left is to add the finishing touches. I'll get cracking, son and done. All right, so I guess that means that the uh, the horse stable getting together a bit better. Quick and quality, blink, and we're done. That's why every son chooses Hudson Construction. <laughs> Okie dokes, feeling pumped. Gonna get this done in one fell swoop. Whoa, hard worker. Wow, that looks great. How's that? Well, well, that's, this is a fine looking stable. Can't say I'm surprised considering your Hudson's construction's number one. Hmm. And thanks for your help with this little project, son. Looks great. Now we can board horses at Lookout Landing. If you need help with horses, please talk to me anytime. The incomplete stable, complete. <laughs> All right then, so delighted by the roof's completion, Carson's finished the stable with incredible skill. Now you can board horses at Lookout Landing. Talk to Lester if you have any horse-related business. Will do. So let's see what else we can do here. We can talk to Carson a bit more. Pretty star craftsmanship, am I right? Gotta say, I've done outdone myself this time. If you end up boarding a horse this year, they'll have a luxurious time. But it looks like maybe Lester needs more from us. Oh, Spot, where did you get off to? Spot? Well, look who it is. I sure can't thank you enough for helping our mini stable come together. Heard me talk to myself, did you? Spot is the name of my beloved horse, you see. Truth be told, he's missing, running away just before the stable was built. Well, he's always been a meek horse, so I can't imagine he's run off too far. He's beautiful. Just one look at his silky, gentle beige coat, and you'd know it was him. Of course, you'd recognize his unique gray dappling, too. That's the reason I call him Spot in the first place. Horse like him, I bet he's someplace with a nice view, taking in the sights. Just wish I didn't have so much trouble climbing the high places these days. Spotting Spot. Lester, who manages the stable at the lookout landing, told you his beige dappled horse Spot right away. Spot is supposedly timid though, so he may be still, be, still be close by. Interesting, so I'll have to look out for them soon. Is there anything more we can do around here? Yet yeah, this thing fell from the sky before. Gotta be thorough here. My first job at the Zonai Discovery Team is checking out this valuable stone st tablet. I'm feeling pretty lucky. Wordsworth went back to Kakarika Village, but I think I might be able to get him to teach me ancient Hyrulean if I make an amazing discovery here. So I have to be really thorough about this. Kakarika Village? It's a Sheikah village southeast of here. When the upheaval happened, some big ring-shaped Zonai ruins fell there. Right now, it's the hottest investigation spot for the Zonai Discovery Team, or survey team. I bet if you got a high enough vantage point, you'd probably be able to see those ring ruins from the lookout landing. I think we have seen them before. But I guess, uh, there's not really too many people we need to talk to to maybe start quests or whatever, but it's always good to check around a little bit, like we're back in the emergency shelter. Uh, does anybody around here need any more help? It's not currently looking like it, but always good to check. I don't have enough orbs for another upgrade there, so we'll head out of here. I definitely want to talk to, uh, what's her name? We're getting it right now. Joshua and the other one. All right, well, for you, you're still sort of pondering things here. You, I have the pose. We got these last episode, right? Or the episode before? Something like that. Swordsman, are you okay over there? You look like you were somewhere else just now. Oh, I bet you were interested in that strange stone, huh? We discovered it in the depths. It looks both naturally formed and as tough, and as though it's been carved into. We don't know much about it, as you can probably tell. There's still so much to learn. So once I'm done with my current investigation, I plan to start digging into it more. So I guess for right now, it still won't let me pray it. You who stand before me. I am one who returns Poe's to the afterlife where they belong. Offer Poe's to me. They are spirits that ought to return to the afterlife. Poe's? Poe's are pitiful beings who have lost their ho way home and wander the depths of this land. Good, evil, that's the futile perspective of narrow-minded beings. There's no such distinction in wandering spirits. You all have already obtained Poe's. Here's a Poe for you. Interesting, yes. Oh, this is indeed a Poe. I have returned the lost spirit to the afterlife, where it belongs. Since I was brought here to the surface, I have been unable to return Poe's to the afterlife. Because of you, I can assist them once again. You should take this. We got a dark clump. 
an unusual substance. It's cool to the touch, and it seems as though it's filled with pitch black darkness. Use it in, a co in cooking to get a gloom resistant effect. Wow. If you offer me more pose, I will give them suitable comp give you suitable compensation. Okay, wow, okay, so we could get the dark clump. We also have a muddle bud, a wildflower with a powerful odor that can disorient and confuse, making it difficult to tell friend from foe. I think we've gotten one of these before, but we'll buy one now. Actually, yeah, I have seven in inventory, never mind. Uh, we got the puff shroom, bomb flower. Whoa, the dark tunic? That seems cool. So I think we should save up for that if not anything else. With the dark clump, should I drop this and see if it maybe has a picture that we can take? I don't know, but we'll try to save up the 150. My brethren, whose spirits reside in the statues for large, far larger than mine, are in the depths of this land. If you counter, encounter my brethren, try offering pose to them. Where are they? If you offer me 10 pose, I will tell you the location of one of my brethren. Tell me. I acknowledge your offering. I will tell you the location of one of my brethren in the depths of this land. Okay, so right there, gotcha. Go to the location indicated on your map. Seek out wandering spirits for my brethren in the depths of this land. Will do. So we could get the dark tunic and that would be such a cool piece of gear to get for sure. So continuing to the depths and of course with it, getting more Poe will be pretty important. Anyways, oh look, we have another Gwarn up here. Hello, this is Offrak, yeah. It's President Yunobo's friend. President Yunobo told us to smash the faces of any monsters that get into Lookout Landing. He says face smashing is Goron tradition. I guess it is. I'm here, anything cool happening? I wonder if uh, she's updated her journal. Read notes on the upheaval. I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. Okay, don't wanna read it a bunch if it's our stuff we've read. Anyways, Pura, I don't know how I forgot that. Linky, welcome back. I've been hearing a lot about your adventures. Hmm. A serious cold front, a food shortage, and a ship floating in the sky in Rito Village. Then, over in Goron City, the Gorons were fixated on marble rockers and had stopped working. And someone who looked like Princess Zelda was connected to what happened in both places. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, I'm glad that the Rito and Gorons were able to get back to business as usual. Seems like entrusting those areas to you was the right decision after all. Hmm. It's become clear as day that there is a connection between Princess Zelda and the upheaval. Things are much more serious than I previously thought. I need you to hurry to the remaining regions and soon. And we need to investigate the other village I'm concerned about too. What other village? <gasps> Kakariko Village, home of the Sheikah tribe. It's off to the southeast in the Nekluda region. Sonai ruins, each shaped like a ring, fell directly on top of the village. Mm. There's gotta be a special reason for it. Right now, the Zonai survey team's elites are taking on the investigation. If you want to know about the Zonai, you should talk to them. If you want more info, talk to Admus down in the shelter. He can probably point you in the right direction. He helps deploy the monster control crew squads to where they're needed and has extensive geographical knowledge. Okay, so yeah, we know about that. Anyway, I can get help from the research division for this, but I'm trusting investigation of the remaining regions with the phenomena to you. So yeah, of course. <laughs> She's gonna give me the lecture about how I forgot, but I just wanted to see if she said anything new about it. Because there should be two more places left to go, right? Yeah, one far to the southwest and one far to the east. There are two locations left, Lanairu to the east and Garuda region to the southwest. Monsters are pretty active to the south anyway, so you're better off taking the close, sticking closer to here, you know? See, that's why I wanted to see what they would suggest. Anyway, if you need a refresher on what to do, check check your Pura pad. Keep me posted. All right, will do. So that was quite the experience we've had in today's episode. We got another area completed, but we'll be doing more of the same, of course, in our adventure of completing regional phenomena. We need to go to all the way to the east. What was that one called? I don't know if it's gonna tell me. Not exactly, but yeah, this is what we're off to in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>